Today is going to be more of a testimony than a sermonette, honestly. Um, last night I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about. And, uh, you know, last month um, when Hanukkah came around, we had a few of the boys over. And Liz wanted to get them a little something for the first night. So she came up with an idea where we had uh, little jars that she bought and little notepads and pens and that throughout the year that they could write down good things that God had done, times that God had provided, and put that in the jar. And then at the end of the year, you know, next year around Hanukkah, again, look at that. Because, you know, you, there are so many things that you forget. Um, and we started doing the same thing off and on. And I don't know if it was because we were paying closer attention or if it was just because God did more things during the last two months or so. But it seems like it's just been one thing after another where God has provided in big and small things just over and over. Um, one of those things that was kind of a big deal for us was, you know, as many of you know, my car was not drivable for probably about six weeks or so. And I, we thought it was something extremely major, something that basically would have totaled the car and made it not fixable, really. Um, I, when I first got it, I took it to the dealership and they gave me a diagnosis that the transmission was going out and it was the the guy said it could be two weeks it could be two years but it's going to stop so that's always kind of been in the back of my mind so one day um went to go pull out of the driveway and it was running like a tractor just wouldn't really get up to speed just shaking real bad so i figured like well it's finally happened um so i did a little research on it but i was already kind of i'd already kind of concluded what it was um and of course it wasn't feasible for me to to fix it given the the quotes that i had and what i had read online for people who had the the same issue with the car so we we were in a kind of a tight spot um and brian and jim were gracious enough to let me borrow their truck during that time where we tried to kind of figure out what we were going to do um because you know liz works full time and then some and i work two different jobs and the the schedules can be kind of all over the place with those two um, and then change, you know, from week to week, it's not really set. Um, so sharing a car wasn't really going to be something that we could do long term. Um, but long story short, um, two weeks ago, uh, on a Saturday night, Jody and Sandy came over. It was freezing cold, um, and they helped me fix that car. Um, what I thought was a transmission issue um, turned out to be something that was fixed and probably less than three hours, I'd say, two or three hours. Um, and it cost me under $100. Um, and it's been running like a top since we did that, better than it ever has since I got it. So it was just what I thought was literally going to be a $5,500 thing to fix that just would not ever be feasible for me to do. Ended up being something like $89 or something like that. And you know, I could I could buy uh, Sandy and, and Jody a burger and probably still be under a hundred dollars, which is just incredible. You know that, that God provided in that way because it was, you know, in the grand scheme of things, that's not a huge thing. And I was thinking about that uh, when Liz and I were kind of like, "What are we going to do?" And, I, and I, we were sitting in our climate-controlled house that we own, and and her car outside, and I was like, "Our second car? What? <laughs> this is awful." It's like it, it kind of makes you feel silly, but it's like God still that still mattered to me. And we were praying about it. So, so God blessed us in that way. He chose to do that. Um, another thing, too, that actually happened, I think it was, it was Thursday morning, Thursday early afternoon maybe, you know, we had that crazy cold temperatures that came through last week down to like five or something like that. And so our pipes froze. And so we didn't, we didn't have any water for showers or anything since probably like Monday night or something, Tuesday morning. So we were stinking. Um, <laughs> Uh, all we had was cold water in, in the kitchen faucet. It was the only water in the house that we had. So we couldn't, we couldn't do any laundry, we couldn't shower, we couldn't do any dishes, so the house was getting to be a wreck and everything. Um, so I had work Thursday afternoon, so I wanted to leave uh, a faucet dripping to see if it would maybe relieve some of the pressure uh, in the pipes because it was supposed to warm up a little bit Thursday, at least above freezing, so I thought, well, while I'm gone, maybe it'll... On, you know, thaw out and everything. Um, so when I went into the bathroom and turned the faucet on a little bit, I could hear rushing water. So I, I got down to the floor to listen, and under the house, of course, I could hear it just gushing out. So I went outside, looked under there, and sure enough, it's just pouring 
out. So I thought, well, the pipes are busted. So I, I called work and called in and I'm thinking I'm giving up a shift today, missing work. And then who knows what this is going to cost and the time it's going to take and how extensive all this is. So I hit the panic button on my phone and told Michael, I was like, what do I do? And so he, uh, he said, okay, I'll come over there in, in a few minutes. And so he came over and he crawled under there. Um, and uh, he had me go out and turn the, the water off and let it settle for a minute. Um, and what it turned out to be was a little elbow, elbow joint where two copper pipes came together. So it had come loose. So he cut the other side off and we went to Lowe's, bought a $8.79 new elbow and put it on there and turned the water on and it was perfectly fine. So again, what I thought could be a big deal and was going to be a headache, it was just this tiny little thing and it ended up costing, I think like 16 bucks and that was with buying Michael a burger from Wendy's. So I counted that in there. So it was a $16 fix, you know, so that was a, a huge you know, weight off of my chest too because I was, you know, thinking it was going to be a lot worse than it was. Um, and God just provided for us and those... You know, both of those situations could have been a whole lot more serious, obviously. But, but even if it had been, uh, if if God hadn't chosen to provide in that way, He would have provided in another way. If the pipes had been completely busted and it cost a bunch of money, or if 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 that was something more serious with my car that made it just completely inoperable for now until forever, He would have provided a way still. Um, turn over to uh, Matthew chapter six. Begin in verse 25. <clears throat> Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value that, value than they? And which of you, being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And of course, the things Jesus is talking about there are much more basic than the issues that, that we were facing, um, talking about the things that you need to survive, clothing and shelter and food. Um, and again, <laughs> I wrote here a note um, about how silly you can feel when you do, when you realize what it is that you're stressing about in relation to the things that other people are without. Um, you know, and obviously I needed a vehicle to continue working. Uh, you know, those jobs to bring home whatever money I could to provide. But God, again, it's not me that's providing in the first place. God is providing, and he always will, no matter what happens in those situations. Um, turn over to, to chapter 7. Begin in verse 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find knock and it will be open to you for everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds and to the one who knocks it will be opened or which of you if his son asks him for bread will give him a stone or if he asks for a fish will give him a serpent if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your your father who is in heaven give, give good things to those who ask him and that's just a, a promise that God will give us good things. Um, and that might not always look good. It might not always be what we ask for, but that's the promise that it will be for our good. 
So like I said, whatever had happened with our situations, even if it had looked worse, I always have to keep in mind that it would be for our good, no matter what, or for the good of his people. Um, turn to Genesis chapter 22. And this is a, a story, of course, that we all know well, but I'll, we'll go over a, a part of it here. We get in verse 9. When they came to the place of which God had, hold, had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the, on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out, of his, reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing that you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted his, up his eyes and looked. And behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his thorns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. And, you know, the place where God provided a sacrifice in place of Isaac um, was very likely the same place where Jesus was offered up in our stead as the ultimate sacrifice, if not the exact spot, at least on the same range. Um, so God was foreshadowing that he was going to provide a sacrifice in our place. And, you know, God provides a way for his people, um, even in the small things. Mm -hmm.